Hey, good morning, everyone that's online. Uh, we're so glad that you guys get to tap in and connect with us uh, to see the things uh, that happen here at Madison. Everyone that is here, we are glad that you got out of bed and that you're here to hear God's word and to worship together because I really feel like the songs that they chose um, just were amazing. And so, you know, and I'm glad to have Gail back. Woo! Woo! And our pastor. And Josh. And Josh. <laughs> the whole guy who runs the show. No, I was kidding. <laughs> Anyways, um, we just wanted to let you guys know, on our website, we've made a few changes on madisonphoenix.org. Um, if you go on the link on the right-hand side, I think it is, there's a connect link. Um, one of the things that we are hopeful to do as leaders is constantly connect with you um, to know what it is we need to pray for, what the things that are um, concerning you, and how can we help, how can we serve you. Um, and that's the biggest thing for us as a staff. We are constantly thinking of different ways to serve you guys and, and what we can do to um, just be a part and, and, and allow you to see what it is to have these gospel communities that we preach about. And so if you're online and we've never met you, please go on our, our website, madisonphoenix.org, uh, click on the connect button right there, um, introduce yourself, and if there's any needs or prayers that you have, please send them down and, and we'll take care of those and, and we'll engage with you. We'll even have pastor uh, uh, give you a call or something if that's what you need. And so this morning we'll get started and we'll pray. Will you all pray with me? Father, uh, I am so excited to be in your house. So God, I, I just pray, Father, that um, every uh, no, every every song that sang, Father God, would just be glorified to you, Father. Um, I just thank you for the first service, Father, and how you minister to us. I pray, Father, that you would continue that same thing. Holy Spirit, you are welcome in this place. Change us, mold us, make us into those things, Father, that you uh, call us to be. Um, Jesus, we, we thank you for your sacrifice and your love for us. And so, Father, at this time right now, we give you our hearts. We put all that stuff to the side that we've been thinking about throughout the week. And that, God, we right now, Father, just focus on you and your love that changes us. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Good morning, Madison Baptist Church. Wait a minute. Good morning. Hey. <laughs> Come on, let's praise the Lord today. Woo. So that joy. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord.
there this morning. Come on now. <laughs> Good morning. <laughs> amen, amen. Thank you, Lord, for what you've done. Hallelujah. Nothing like your name, oh Lord. King of kings. It's a peace.
you imagine what it must have been like that for the angels just worshiping and letting the, the shepherds know that the king is born. and let this ring out three verses of silent night holy night let's just let it ring out and give God just time to dwell within the praises of his people be seated. Come to our time of Advent, and uh, this morning we're going to light a couple of candles, but we're also going to include communion, and so if you didn't have a chance to grab one of the little uh, communion cups, we just invite you to go ahead and just get up right now and go get one of those. Uh, it's interesting when we uh, come into the Christmas season and we put so much focus on the manger, and uh, that is true and that is right and that is good that we do that because his birth his incarnation coming to this world is the greatest thing that's happened other than the cross uh, the fact that he would come and live a perfect life and then die on the cross for our sins so that we could have forgiveness of sins so that we could have the hope of eternal life and so I think very appropriate I've asked uh, John and Jen and Izzy to come this morning and they're going to light our uh, advent candles we're going to do two purple ones today uh, because we were in the hurry of last week, weren't able to get uh, everything put together. And so uh, this week we're celebrating two weeks of Advent and one. And so they're going to be lighting those candles and then they'll help us with some of the prayers for communion. But I want to read this scripture as they light the candles from Luke 1, verses 68 through 79. And this is uh, the prophet or the priest Zechariah speaking this 
uh, blessing. And he says, Blessed is the Lord, the God of Israel, because He has visited and provided redemption for His people. He has raised up a horn of salvation for us in the house of His servant David, just as He spoke by the mouth of His holy prophets in ancient times. Salvation from our enemies and from the hand of those who hate us. He has dealt mercifully with our ancestors and remembered His holy covenant, the oath that He swore to our father Abraham to grant that we, having been rescued from the hand of our enemies, would serve Him without fear in holiness and righteousness in His presence all our days. And you, child, will be called a prophet of the Most High. You will go before the Lord to prepare His ways, to give His people knowledge of salvation through forgiveness of their sins because of God's merciful compassion. The dawn from on high will visit us to shine on those who live in darkness and the shadow of death, to guide our feet into the way of peace. And so this morning as uh, we take communion, we remember that Jesus came to do all those things and that He came to uh, rescue us from our sin and to bring His salvation. And so when we uh, take the bread, we're remembering that His body was broken for us. When we take the cup, we're remembering that His blood was shed for us on the cross for the forgiveness of our sins. And I've asked uh, John and Jen if they would just help us with some prayers. And uh, Jen, would you be willing to just lead us in a prayer uh, for the bread and just uh, thank God for this gift of His sacrifice for us? As we come to you today, I thank you for your sacrifice. I thank you that you died on the cross, that we could have eternal life, Lord. As we get ready to just um, take the bread, Lord, that we would remember your body, your body that was hurt for us, Lord, your body that was beaten for us that we could have eternal life and I thank you for that Jesus I thank you that you listen to your father I pray that we listen to you Lord I pray that as we take this Lord that we would remember that sacrifice that we would remember what you did for us Amen Amen. take and eat in remembrance of him Same way, John, would you just lead us in a prayer of thanksgiving for this cup of remembrance? In the same way, after uh, the bread was broken, our Lord gave uh, us a cup of remembrance. Blood shed for you, for me. one drop covered my sins your sins Christ gave it all every little bit the father had given the Passover lamb salvation bought for you and me Lord Jesus we thank you you didn't have to but you voluntarily gave up your life for us we love you Lord and Lord Jesus, we pray that you heal us inside and out. Heal our land. Help us to see you. We love you, Lord. Thank you so much for being you. One drop. But you gave it all. Let's remember him. Amen. Amen. Take and drink. Noel.
Father, we thank you for that statement of Christmas being here, Noel. God, that you would come and that you would uh, give us your life. That it would all start with a little baby showing us that anyone can come. And that ultimately you would give your life for us on the cross. We thank you so much. And we pray that this morning as we get into your word that it would just be a a moment of just centering our hearts, uh, affection on you and our minds, attention on the things that you want us to know this Christmas, out of all the other Christmases we've been through, that this Christmas would do something new in our hearts, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. I want to thank you for being here. Welcome again our online audience and just say uh, thank you for tuning in. I know things are 
uh, getting crazier and crazier as uh, time goes on. And uh, here in Arizona, you know, the numbers are increasing. We want to just encourage you that we're doing everything we can to provide uh, physical spacing here and sanitizing and encouraging people to wear masks and all of that. And so uh, we want you to uh, just make your own decisions, but we'd love for you to continue to worship with this as long as we're able to, to keep everyone safe. And if you're joining us online, we're glad that you're a part of uh, our online family. Uh, I do want to just give you one quick uh, announcement. Those of you that are in leadership uh, in, at Madison Church and those of you that are volunteering in any way, you need to understand that you are in leadership. When you help with something, when you're a part of something, we have a leadership team meeting tomorrow night uh, and we're going to gather together. And so be looking for those emails and reminders and so that you can come out and join us for some worship, some prayer. And then we'll uh, just be giving you a challenge for what God has in store for us in, in the coming days. Uh, but today we're starting a new series called All I Want for Christmas. And as I thought about that title, I thought, wonder what people would put in that this year. What do you really, really, really want for Christmas? And, and I think a lot of people would probably answer that. All I want for Christmas is for 2020 to be over right? There's, there's, a, there's a general sense that this has been a bad year, and uh, it's definitely been a challenging year. I'm, I'm excited that God still moves even in our darkest times and our hardest times, and so God is uh, still redeeming people, and stories of salvation and redemption and restoration are happening all around us, and so I'm excited about that. But it has been a hard year, hasn't it? And, and many of us are tempted to think, man, if I can just get through this year, then everything will go back to normal. But normal had its own problems, didn't it? <laughs> we still had broken relationships. We still got sick. Uh, we still had people we didn't get along with at work. We still had uh, issues in our lives where we're struggling to follow God. And so I think we need to be careful not to think that somehow a brand new year, brand new president, whatever's going to happen in 2021 is somehow going to solve all these things that we've been struggling with in 2020. Because the reality is, at the end of the day, uh, the thing that makes a difference in our lives is our spiritual health as Christians. Uh, our relationship with God is what gives us the strength and the fuel to go through things and to grow in different areas. And so uh, one of the most powerful verses that I've been meditating on over the last several weeks and months is just uh, a verse I learned as a kid, Revelation 3.20. And it simply says that, I, I learned this way, Behold, I stand at the door and knock. See, I stand at the door and knock. If anyone hears my voice and opens the door, what's Jesus going to do? He's going to come in. He's going to eat with us. He's like, I want to be with you. And that's the story of the Bible. And, and from Genesis to Revelation and, and even the Christmas story, the most dramatic thing that God has done to be with us is to send his own self in the, in the form of Jesus Christ to live on this earth to be born in a manger, to die on the cross for our sins so that we could be with him for eternity. And as I think about this Christmas, I want us to go a little bit deeper into some maybe more important questions and not just think about, hey, I just want to get rid of this last year and go on to something new, but look deeper inside our hearts and say, God, what, what do I really need this Christmas? That I wouldn't uh, waste all these things you've been trying to teach me. Because see, no matter what we've been going through, there's nothing that can keep us from God's best for us. Because God's best for us is that we would be with Him. Whether the pandemic has uh, been a struggle for you or whether it's been easy for you, uh, a pandemic can't even keep you away from God's best in your life. A lot of us have gone through a lot of pain in this season. We've, we've lost loved ones. We've struggled in so many different areas. But even our, our pain can't keep us from God's best for us because we can be with Him. We can know His presence. Now, it can, can distract us, can it? All of this is a big distraction. And, and I think even deeper than that, it's a deception that comes that says, hey, I've got all this other stuff going on. I really don't have time for God. And so we find ourselves sometimes having double standards. And it's like, well, yeah, you know, I need, I need to get my groceries so I can go to Walmart, but I don't really need my spiritual food so I can't go to church. You see, the, the problem that comes is when we get deceived by all the things that are happening around us, we can easily get to a place where we're like, 
ah, there's something in between me and God's best for my life. But the reality is that connection with God, that deep soul connection with Him, our relationship with Him, nobody can keep you from that. That is us. And that's why today we're going to ask this question. I think it's probably the most important question we could ask to put things on our Christmas list this year. This year. God, what do you want to do in my spiritual life? And so we could say to ourselves, what do I want for my spiritual life this year? If I'm making a Christmas list for my spiritual life, what do I want for my spiritual life this year? Because I think it's the biggest thing that God is trying to teach us. And if we don't uh, capture these moments where God has done radical things in our culture to, to slow us down and to notice that He is there and that we need Him desperately, if we miss this opportunity to really dive deeper into our spiritual lives, I think we've really made a big mistake. He's taken away some of our financial security. He's taken some away our physical security. We're not sure if we're going to be healthy. He's taken away uh, even loved ones from us. And we've experienced loss. He's taken away our sport. It's like, <laughs> it's the worst. Anybody glad for football? Yeah, amen. Like, I didn't know what I was going to do until I could start watching football again. And it's like, isn't that crazy, though? We're so dependent on all these things that we think, oh, now my life is good because I can watch football, right? Reality is we need to ask a deeper question. What do I want for my spiritual life? And I think God is just simply saying to us, look, I'm standing at the door. <laughs> I'm knocking on your heart's door. And I just want you to open it up and to receive me and to grow in your relationship with me. I think this year, maybe more than any other year, is a good year for us to kind of identify with the very first Christmas. Because during the very first Christmas, things were a mess. Just like they're a mess for us right now. If you would grab your Bibles and turn to Luke chapter 1, uh, we're going to be looking at the story of Mary this morning when the angel Gabriel comes to her and uh, gives her this amazing news. We'll start in verse 26 of Luke chapter 1. But I want to give you a little bit of context as we get into that. Uh, in that time when Jesus came 2,000 years ago, the Roman Empire was in control. And the Jews were underneath that. They were under oppression. They felt the harassment of the government on them. Anybody from California? Oh, no. Uh, do you feel those things? Like there's this, it feels like we're under oppression now and they're telling us when we can worship and how we can worship and, and all of those different things. I think this year we can identify maybe more with what it was like for the Jews to be under Roman oppression than maybe ever before. And granted, our stuff is not that big, but it, we feel it a little bit more this year. Uh, religious decay. The, the church in Jesus' day had kind of lost its power. They were more about politics and power and affecting people than they were about really helping people. Can you see that happening in the American culture? That's become part of who we are. I was thinking of this, their healthcare system was a wreck, right? They didn't have one. <laughs> you basically sit on the side of the street and beg. Uh, and so they, they had all these social, political issues. Uh, they had uh, the haves and the have-nots in a greater way than we even do. And so there was all this social unrest. Even protesters. Now, you may have remember a certain disciple. His name was Simon the Zealot. You know what the Zealots were? They were Jews that were tired of the oppression of the Romans, and so they were protesting almost like guerrilla warfare, and little things would rise up, and then the government would squash it down, and it would rise up again, and they'd squash it down. In the middle of all this unrest, here comes Jesus to be born in a manger and this message comes to a little young probably teenage girl named Mary verse 26 in the sixth month the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth to a virgin engaged to a man named Joseph of the house of David and the virgin's name was Mary an angel came to her and said greetings favored woman the Lord is with you. 
The Lord is with you. Is there anything better than the Lord being with you? This is the message that comes to uh, Mary here, and it's the same message I think that God wants us to hear today, that the Lord wants to be with you. He wants this relationship of yours to grow with Him. But as I thought about that, I kind of had some fun with it, like Pastor Norm used to always do, uh, putting it in my own context and thinking about what if that happened today and an angel showed up with a young lady. Perhaps they may be just stuck on their phone going like this, not even noticing that there was something new. Scrolling, busy, watching the latest show. How many times in our culture are we so distracted that it's hard for us to see a visitation by God and His messages to us. And it made me think of this point for us. Maybe one of the things that we need to do, learn from the life of Mary, that she was attentive in this moment, that she was willing and ready to hear the message from this angel, that we would say, you know, on my Christmas list this year, I want to be more attentive to God's voice. I want to be ready to listen to God at any moment. When God shows up, whether it's in my time in His Word, whether it's uh, the Holy Spirit prompting me to do something, I want to be attentive to the voice of God in my life. I, I've been sharing with you as a congregation over the last several weeks, this is probably my, one of my weakest areas. You say, that's pretty bad for a pastor. Uh, I listen to God's Word, and I love to study God's Word, and I love to teach, and I love all these things. But sometimes I'm running so busy that I don't hear that still small, still small voice of God just speaking to me. I don't sometimes slow down enough to spend enough time for Him just to speak to me, to encourage me, to show me what's next. And I, I think that's something I'm really trying to grow in. And uh, Sometimes you call it as a discipline, silence and solitude. How many of you are really good at silence and solitude? Probably not many of us. In this culture, it's really hard, isn't it? And, and I'm a doer, so I'm running and doing and always thinking about the next thing. And when I'm studying, I'm always going to the next thing. And oh, look at this. And oh, look at that. And oh, go here. And sometimes I just need to slow down and let God just speak to me and be a, attentive to His voice. I appreciate this about Mary. If you're someone who struggles to get into God's Word, to hear the voice of God, you need to start carving out some time to be with God. Uh, if you don't have a rhythm in your life of doing that every single morning when you start your day, that is one of the most powerful things you can do as a Christian, to grow your relationship with God, to hear His voice in your life, is to carve out time to be with Him, to be attentive to His voice. And, and if you're just starting on this journey and you say, well, you know, I, I sit down and I try to read the Bible and I have no idea what I'm doing. I would encourage you to try it anyways, but you might even just take an easy step with an app on your phone that would remind you every morning to get into a passage. Uh, I have the app version. If you don't have that app, it's probably, I think it's the best Bible app that's out there. And you can literally come up with plans where it'll remind you on a daily basis. I'm reading one and I would encourage you to pick a Christmas one. There's one called the Christmas Story that just has simple scriptures about the Christmas story every single day. And when you get into a rhythm of being attentive to God's voice, you'll see that it will change your life. It'll change your day. It'll change how you respond during the day. It'll change how you deal with your spouse if you simply learn to be attentive to God's voice. There's one big one that I'm not good at. Journaling. Writing down. Because you know why? Because you have to stop and you have to slow down and you have to take time for your thoughts to actually write. I would even like typing it because I can type faster than I can write. But to slow down and say, hey God, I want to be attentive to your voice. What are you saying to me today? It's something that I'm trying to work on. But you know, sometimes when you hear God's voice, you're still just a little not sure what he means or it's just a little hard to grasp. And that's exactly where Mary was at. She was attentive. She was ready to hear the angel. Look at verse 29. She was deeply troubled by this statement, wondering what kind of greeting this could be. And then the angel told her, do not be afraid. Why? Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. You know what that word favor is? 
In the Greek, it's this word grace. And it's just translated favor there. Grace. Undeserved favor. When, when God just looks on you and says, I'm giving you this even though you don't deserve it. And so here's Mary listening to this angel and the angel saying, don't be afraid for you have found favor with God. God has given you favor. I think something important for us to put on our Christmas list this year is, God, I just want to be more receptive to your grace. I need to learn what it looks like to be receptive to God's grace in my life. Here's Mary. She's a little hesitant to receive it, but I think we can see that she does as she walks through the story. We had a great time at men's breakfast. These are opportunities where you can come out and hear from God's voice. Uh, Corey gave a great devotional, and we were talking about what's the difference between uh, condemnation, where you're just kind of like putting yourself down and being accusing yourself, and, and you feel more and more terrible, and you get worse and worse. What's the difference between condemnation and biblical or, or godly conviction, where God puts something on your heart, and you're like, oh yeah, I need to do something different. Because they both feel the same, don't they, in one sense. They both are the same feeling like, oh, I shouldn't do that, that's bad. Like, you begin to feel like this guilt that comes up in you. And some of us have been trained that guilt is a terrible thing, so don't ever feel guilty. But actually, we need to feel guilty for our sins. The difference we discovered between condemnation and conviction is the application of the gospel and repentance and forgiveness. So, in the gospel, according to Jesus, when we get that feeling like, oh, I shouldn't have done that, what do we do? We turn to Jesus and we say, Jesus, forgive me. Jesus, I know you still love me. You've given me everything in Christ. You died on the cross for this. I don't have to continue to contemn myself for this because I have your grace. Is that hard for you to receive? Most of us are pretty good at thinking about it for others. Certain people we struggle to give it to, but a lot of people we're just like, we're able to give them grace. And if you're a Christian, you've been in the church a long time, you probably taught other people that they need to receive God's grace. But then in the moment, what's the hardest thing to do? To receive it for yourself. To let yourself just be forgiven and keep moving forward and not let that I just call it the squirrel cage. Keep running in your mind. Oh, I can't believe you did that. How come you did that? That was terrible. Just repent and start walking towards God and freedom can come. But that's what it means to receive God's grace. And so if we really want that for our lives, we have to really begin to think about it. God, change my spiritual life. Give me to a point where I can receive, where I can be receptive to your grace. Have you ever wondered why God picked Mary? You know, I, I think we're Protestant background in here. We have a lot of Catholic friends that come to our church. But I think being Protestant my whole life, we kind of sometimes uh, try to shy away from the story of Mary a little bit because we kind of feel like uh, on the other side, on the Catholic side, that, the, that Mary is almost worshipped and almost made to be like an idol because she was perfect and almost like sometimes it feels like she's better than Jesus or something. And so we say, I don't want to do that. So we go the other direction and we kind of uh, ignore the uh, amazing truth of who Mary was and how she lived. Listen to why Mary was picked. Out of her own words, if you just go to the right a little bit, verse 46, she sings this song and she just goes before the Lord and just blesses Him for this great privilege, this grace that's been showered upon her. And she says this, my soul magnifies the Lord and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior because He has looked with favor, here's that grace again, on the humble condition of His ser servant. Surely now all generations will call me blessed. Why? Because I'm awesome? Because I'm the best candidate for birthing Jesus? No, because the Mighty One has done great things for me. And His name is holy. His mercy is from generation to generation on those who fear Him. He has done a mighty deed with His arm. He has scattered the proud because of thoughts of their heart. He has toppled the mighty from their thrones and exalted who? The lowly. 
this passage reminds me of that scripture that says you have to humble yourself in the sight of the Lord and He will lift you up. I think the only reason God chose Mary was because she was humble. Because she recognized that she probably didn't deserve such great favor in her life that she was willing to just receive this amazing grace that God would give her. See, sometimes we, we put things people up on a pedestal and say, well, God can't really do anything for me because I'm not that awesome. Like, I see that person over there, and they're obviously awesome, but I know myself, and I'm a wreck, and I have all these bad thoughts, and I've got this past, and I've got all these things, and so God could never really do anything with me. Actually, when you begin to understand that, you're getting closer to a person that God can use because all he's looking for is humility. All he's looking for is somebody that's willing to say, you know what, I'm just a servant. I'm just here to help. I think that's what's happening in Mary's life. She had this humble spirit that was willing not to condemn herself, but to receive the grace of God when his favor was upon her. Maybe that's something that you and I need to ask for this year. Look what happens when Mary is attentive and receptive to God. Look at verse 31. Now listen. You will conceive and give birth to a son. And you will name him Jesus, and he will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his father David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever and his kingdom will have no end. This is, for a young Jewish girl, this has got to be the greatest blessing, act of favor on her life that she could ever dream of. They knew the Messiah was coming. They knew that he was going to be born of a virgin. And someday, maybe little or young Jewish girls dreamed about the fact that, well, maybe I'll get to birth to Messiah. But you know how you dream about something, but you never think it's going to happen to you? I kind of imagine that's probably where Mary was. And then here in this moment, it's happening to her. Why? Because God's favor is on her, and He's just blessing her. Not because she's somebody amazing and awesome, simply because she's humble enough to receive the grace of God. Can that be a lesson for us today? That we need to get to that kind of place where we can be humble enough just to receive maybe even something more than we could ever dream. Because most of us want to just take the, the easy way out and say, well, yeah, God does nice things. Well, obviously, He died on the cross for me, so He's forgiven my sins. But, you know, there's probably not much more that's going to happen in my life. What if we would dare to dream that God wanted to put His favor on us and see the world changed because of us? as a church, as an individual, in your job, whatever your calling is, wherever you're at, that if you would simply receive the favor of God, that He might do things that would just blow our minds. But we have to be more receptive to God's grace. Now, if you're lacking faith to receive these kinds of things, you're not alone. Mary is exactly like that. Look at verse 34. Mary asked the angel, uh, how can this be since I have not had sexual relations with the man? The angel replied to her, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the Holy One to be born will be called the Son of God. And consider your relative Elizabeth, even she has conceived a son in her old age and this is the sixth month for her who was called childless for nothing will be impossible with God. Nothing will be impossible for God. So here's Mary and all of her uh, just kind of uh, physical thinking or temporal thinking saying, man, this is, there's no way this is going to work out. There is no way that uh, this is going to be a good plan. I can't see any way that this is going to happen. But what does God tell her? Nothing's impossible with God. This reminds me that I need to want to be more confident with God's plan in my life. That, that I need to have this confidence. We'll see Mary in a moment just says, okay, she just submits to it. She, she says, God's plan, he must have a plan. I don't know how this is all going to work out, but I'm going to put my faith and trust in what God has for me today. He 
Can you imagine being Mary in this moment? The absurdity of this plan that God is pulling up? Like, wait, I'm supposed to tell everyone that the Holy Spirit got me pregnant. Right? Like, I'm pretty sure that's not going to fly. And it didn't, did it? In that culture, there's no way that people were like, oh, the Holy Spirit, yeah, that happens all the time. Nobody's believing it. Nobody's buying it. They're probably ostracized. God has to send an angel to Joseph to convince him so that he doesn't even divorce her quietly. They go through a lot of stuff, and you get that sense in the Christmas story, don't you, that they're kind of two people all by themselves against the world. But what are they doing? They're trusting God's plan. They're confident that God has a plan. That somehow, some way, He's going to work this out. Some of us have faced some impossible things this year. And we've dealt with some very difficult things. We've had family get sick. We've lost loved ones. We've lost jobs. We've lost income. There's lots of things that have happened to us. Can you be confident that God has a plan? I think we learn from the lives of the stories of the people in the Bible like Mary. Yes, we can. This plan was kind of a crazy plan, wasn't it? Remember the song, Mary, Did You Know? We sing that every year. I think there might be a few verses missing from that song. Like, Mary, did you know that your son was going to be lied about, beaten, tortured, put on a cross, crucified. Did you know that was going to happen? Can you imagine if she knew all of that up front? She'd be like, I'm out. <laughs> no, you pick somebody else. There's, there's a lot of other girls that can get pregnant by the Holy Spirit. I'm just, I'm out. But sometimes God can't show us all of the plan. Little by little, we get the plan and we just have to be confident that God's plan is going to work out. That there's something that he is doing. And it doesn't mean that all the things that are happening are good, but it means that, uh, like Romans 8.28 says, that he can make something good even out of the worst things in our lives. That he can work it together for some kind of good. That he does have a purpose. Look what happened in Mary's life. She had to watch her son go through all these things, but for what great purpose? So that you and I could sit here this morning and be forgiven. So God did have a plan, didn't He? And in that same way, even though we can't see the end result yet, God has a plan for us and for your life and for whatever you're going through right now, there is a plan that you can be confident in. One last thing. Luke 1, verse 38. This may be the hardest thing. Watch Mary. She just says, See, I am the Lord's servant, said Mary. May it happen to me as you have said. And then the angel left her. I don't know about you. I want to be more obedient to God's will. I want to be more like Mary in my spiritual life where God shows up and says these crazy things and has all these plans and wants me to do these things. And my first impression is, yeah, tell me how that's all going to work out and then I'll kind of decide whether I want to do that or not. But that's not Mary, is it? She's like, I'm your servant. Here I am. I wonder if we should remind ourselves of Mary's words this week. Like just going through different things, we just say, I am the Lord's servant. Things that are hard, things that are difficult for us, and maybe relationships or work things, financial things that in those moments we can just be confident with God's plan and we can just become obedient to God's will in that moment and just say, I am the Lord's servant. I don't know exactly how this is going to turn out. I don't know why I'm here in this moment maybe, but I am the Lord's servant in this moment. I think that would change our jobs. I think that would change our relationships. It would change our marriages. That if we could just show up in every circumstance and be obedient to God's will, say, Lord, I'm your servant. Now, how are we going to do this? How are we going to get to a place where we can be like Mary that hears all this stuff and, and listens and just like, okay, God, here I am. Let's do it. I think everything that we've talked about this morning can be helpful to that. If we take time to slow down and be attentive 
to what God has for us, to listen to his voice, I think we'll find more courage and strength to do that. If we can, in those moments, receive God's grace and just understand that, hey, we may not have it all figured out, we may not have uh, a way to do everything, but we can just receive God's grace and forgiveness in that moment. And then that can make us confident in his plan to take another step. Just take another step. If we're working on all those things, I think that we could have moments this week where we just say, Lord, here I am, I'm your servant. Here's my question for you, because I know sometimes when you get this much information in a message, you're like, ew, that's a lot. And I don't think I can remember all that. What if you were to pick one of these areas? Put it on your Christmas list for your spiritual life this year. Say, God, there's a lot of areas in my life that I know I need to work on. But I'm, I'm putting this one on my list this year. And for me, I'm just saying, I, I want to be attentive to your voice, God. I want to have, I want to be able to slow down in moments and, and just listen to you and see what you're saying to me. Others of you might be in this place where like self-condemnation is just like a regular thing for you. You just beat yourself up all day long and you need to get to a place where you're just receptive of God's grace in your life, where you can just receive it, not deserve it, because that's not grace, is it? <laughs> grace is undeserved and just receive it. Others of us have been through so much stuff this year that probably the most important thing for us is just to hang on to this faith and believe that God has a plan. I, I just need to be more confident that God has a plan and that He's going to work these things out and my faith needs to grow in these moments. And it could be that you're in a situation where you know exactly what God is leading you to, exactly what God is calling you to, and you just need to get to this place of surrender where you say, okay, Lord, here I am. I'm your servant. I'll do it. I know what it is you're putting on my heart. I just don't want to do it. But you get to that place. You know, as Christians, I think, uh, especially as a culture, but even as Christians, we've fallen into this kind of making COVID an excuse for everything in our lives. Like, you know, when COVID's over, then we'll do this. When COVID's over, then I'll do that. When COVID's over, then we'll go back to this. But I think God is calling us to something deeper, even in the midst of however crazy the rest of this year gets, no matter how crazy 2021 is, that we would put something serious on our Christmas wish list for our spiritual lives this morning. I think there's one thing that can help us do that. And the worship team's going to come and sing a song in a minute. It's one of my favorite songs, and it just says, Lord, I need you. If you can at least get to that place this morning where you can say, God, okay, I don't have it all figured out, but I, here's one thing I do know. I need you. I need you to show up in my life. I need you to teach me these things. I need you to show me these things. I need you to help me take my next step forward. And I know there's people listening right now who have never taken a step of faith for the very first time and said, God, I believe you died on the cross for me and I want you to forgive my sins and I want to be your child forever. We call this the gospel, the good news that Jesus says, I want to be with you. I'm standing at the door. I'm knocking on the door of your life saying, hey, I am here. I want you to be with me. But there comes this point where we have to admit I'm broken. I'm sinful. I mess up all the time. And I need somebody to save me from that. And I believe that Jesus died on the cross to pay for every one of those sins, every sin in my past, every sin in my future, that Jesus died on the cross to pay for those. And then He rose again to prove that I could have eternal life. And then you just simply confess that He is Lord, that you want to walk with Him for the rest of your life. And then you'll begin to receive this favor that we're talking about. I don't know where you're at in your spiritual life, but I, I do know this, you need the Lord. Whether you're a Christian, you've been walking with Him for 50 years, or whether you're a skeptic and you're out there and you're not quite sure what's going on with this whole Jesus thing, you need the Lord. I'd invite you to stand as we pray. Father, we come before you this morning with humble hearts, recognizing that you know, we don't have it all figured out 2020 has been a crazy year. As we look towards Christmas, we're tempted to think about uh, just kind of ignoring everything and hoping everything will be better. But God, you want to do some serious work in our hearts. I believe that there's work that you want to do in our hearts this morning. 
as we think about our spiritual lives, our relationship with you, and we know that that flows into every other area of our life, but God, in these moments, would you show us where it is exactly that we need you? Whether we need to be more attentive to your voice, whether we need to receive your grace, maybe even for the first time, whether we need to just trust you and say, God, I'm confident you have a plan for me and I'm going to keep taking faithful steps till I can see it. And God, we pray that every one of us would come to a place where we could say, Lord, here I am, I'm your servant. I just want to be obedient to your will. God, I thank you for teaching me that that's, that's your best for us. That when we walk as close as we can to you, that's when our lives are filled with the most joy and peace. doesn't mean everything's perfect. But God, you work things in our lives that give us joy. My prayer for each one of us this morning, God, is that you would do the work you need to in our hearts and let us just confess in these moments that we need you, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Pastor Eric and I will be up here for prayer. I invite you to just do your business before the Lord.
truth of that song just kind of stays with you this week. You get stuck in those moments, Lord, I need you. And then begin to think specifically, be intentional about what you want God to do in your spiritual life. And I pray that God will bless you. Father, we thank you for these moments that we've had, and each one of us has a story about how we need you. And we need you in different ways, uh, in different days, and we pray that this morning you would just fill every single person, everyone that's watching online, everybody that watches this even in the future, that in this moment, you would fill their heart with the grace that they need to take the next step, to be confident in your plan. And God, as they just open up their hearts and say, God, I, I need you, but I'm willing. Here I am, I'm your humble servant. God, just bless them. Shower them with the favor of God. Help them to see the dreams and the plans that you have for them, that there is great things in store, no matter how hard 2020 has been, that you can uh, overcome that and you can take us to new heights. So God, as we leave to be the church, help us to be those kinds of people that would share that with others, that would invite somebody, that would uh, show up for a leadership team meeting, that would do whatever it takes so that you can be glorified this Christmas season above every Christmas season we've experienced. This is our prayers, we pray in Jesus' name.